Thank you very much. Uh, pleasant good morning to everyone who is taking time off to come and speak and listen to such an important topic. First, let me welcome the head table, Father Harvey, of the Jackie Shop and Miss Bill Hodge. I know quite well. Today is a very important day, a red letter day in Trinidad and Tobago. When we have such a discussion that is occurring in the University of the West Indies and hosted by Professor Watson, I see myself as extremely fortunate to have reached this position. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have begun to discuss in Trinidad and Tobago a very uncomfortable topic. Because it hits, it, it hits all aspects of society. Not only the, it, it, has it hit the religious aspect, the moral aspect, the educational aspect, the medical aspect, and society as a whole. Now you may wonder why am I here today? I have been a medical practitioner for quite a long time, and I have seen the effects of illegal activities and illegal termination. However, I've also seen and looked at those that were done with proper medical supervision for specific reasons. And I see today that the topic for me is not really that of terminations, but that of women's rights. I see it as a woman's right thing, not as a termination specific topic. And I'm here today to thank Professor Watson. Because when I heard, and I'm doing it political, when I heard the Minister of Health today shoot down the topic of the discussions, it is then I started to push the topic forward with, together with, my, with my, my people and my um, staff. Reason behind that, I think personally, as it happened in Barbados in 1983, the then Minister of Health, Ms. Billy Miller. She worked in the family planning area for quite a long time and she saw the effects of botched terminations, illegal terminations, etc. And she came up with the Medical Termination Act of 1983 in Barbados. And Barbados has gone forward. And what they have done is specify certain things that that are necessary in order to allow doctors to come up with the determination of whether to terminate or not, depending on requests. Today we are fortunate to have medical systems in place, medical investigations such as amniocentesis, genetic labeling, and now we have Zika. Zika has been associated with microcephaly. Now what is microcephaly? It's a problem that occurs, developmental problem that occurs in the neurological plate in early pregnancy, causing calcification of the brain, small heads, brain dysfunction, and also for new, new thoughts, eye, eye defects. These children will end up being brain deficient and whatever secret. Do we allow and say to, to, to our ladies, because they, ladies have what we call the maternal instinct, they will decide if they want to and want to continue going that way or not. They will decide. And we're not advocating that you do termination at will. This discussion was done for discussion purposes. And I'm extremely glad that we have members of the religious body, the Father Harvey, the Catholic Church, and others. And that was my whole intent, to bring people together to discuss this topic and whether or not come to a decision or conclusion or move it forward to ask for legislation otherwise. Because our legislation is at stake. And if you read the legislation of the, of the offenses that you lack, you'll be horrified in such a manner that anyone who assists in the termination can end up in four years in prison, whether it be physical, medical, or assisting. So when somebody goes to a pharmacy and asks for Mr. Prostor, 
because of pregnancy, which is, I don't use the trade name, you are aiding and abetting a woman to have a termination, and you are, you can have, you can end up with four years imprisonment. And also there is two years imprisonment. I'm not saying go the way of Barbados. I'm not saying go the way of termination. I'm not saying anything more than I have brought it to the table. Utilizing my member of parliament status, my medical status. And what I'm saying here is not a party's position. This is a medical position, a constituency position of Dr. Huarta. This is not a party's position, I make it clear. And as a result of that, I am glad this morning that we have begun the discussions. And I hope to see, moving forward, more women's group come out and speak on the behalf of women, their rights, etc. More, more religious bodies come out and give their point of view. You see, archaic legislation needs to be changed. I've, and I've heard that this legislation is approximately a, almost about 90 years old, of 19, um, 1920, in Trinidad Tobago. There's cases such as I, I read about Rex versus Bond, 1938, that people are using it. There's Roe versus Wade, people use that. There's pro choice, there's pro um, anti choice, there's, there's all sorts of things around this topic. And if you go into the literature, you'll find that it's all over the place. The United States has legalized it to some extent, Barbados has legalized it. But where do we want to go? And, and I'll tell you something Barbados was lucky. The Minister of Health was lucky because they had a very small Catholic population in Barbados. <laughs> no, I'm not saying so. I'm not, I'm not saying so. And that, that, has, that has been reported. That is what's in it. That's what's in it. Okay. Not my personal opinions. The Minister of Health of El Salvador, El Salvador, where it is banned, banned, is starting to speak about discussions in result of Zika. Now, I'm not using Zika to do, to say, okay, to me, everything that you as a contraceptive. <coughs> I have begun the discussion, and I'm glad it has started. And you see, when I see the, uh, the crowd here, I say to myself, we are on our way to determine where we want to go. And as the former Minister of Health, people might ask, why you didn't do it when you were there? Yes. They're going to ask it. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm mean, going to my Donald Trump mode just now, yes? so I'm trying not to. <laughs> the Minister of Health, but I was Minister of Health. I spoke about it at cabinet level, but we were not faced with this right-handed punch of Zika in your face that is associated with serious neurological conditions. We were not faced with that. It's unfortunate that the Minister of Health now is faced with it. Had I been faced with it, I would have had to have done what I think was, what was possible, look for a referendum, look for something, see where to go. I'm not the Minister of Health now, so I'm trying to do it right now. But at the end of the day, I am glad and I hope more women will come about, come forward, speak to it. And I understand one thing, I know the religious bodies have their views and they are they're, they're right to have their views, but I still am going to say and I'm going to end with this, I believe women should have the right to deal with their bodies in the way that they see fit, whether yes or no, that is their right. Thank you very much.